Hello everyone, Dennis here. In this video, I am going to discuss with you GCE O-Level Mathematics October-November 2022 Paper 1. The subject code is 4048. This video is brought to you by A Swift Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Also, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Alright, let's start discussing the paper with the first question. Calculate 5 root of 12.5 square minus 6.8 over 0 0.037. One mark. So, to get the answer, you just need to press the calculator to get the value. So if you press the calculator, the value is negative 1.94, rather up to three significant figures. Next, question number two, simplify a 3y to the power 5 times 5y to the power 3, one mark, and b 3 bracket 2x minus 1 minus 2, one mark. So for the first question a here, 3y to the power 5 times 5y to the power 3, so we multiply the numbers with the number 3 times 5 and then for the indices since it is multiplied we can add the power together so it will be 3 times 5 times y to the power 5 plus 3 which is 15y to the power 8 and 15y to the power 8 is the answer for b 3 bracket 2x minus 1 minus 2 first we expand the bracket we'll get 3 6x minus 3 minus 2 then simplify, we have 6x minus 5. Hence, 6x minus 5 is our answer. Question 3. Given this set of data, A. Find the median of the set of numbers. One mark. And B. Find the range of the set of numbers. One mark. So to answer the first question, we need to arrange the data in ascending order, hence it will be 14, 16, 19, 25, 32, 32, 32, and 40. So from here, we can see that there are 8 numbers, hence we divide the 8 by 2, we get 4. So which means that the median is between the 4th and the 5th data. So here is the 4th and the 5th data, and the median will be the number in the middle of these two numbers, hence it is 25 plus 32 divided by 2, which is 28.5. Hence, 28.5 is the answer. Next, to calculate the range, so we can apply the formula for range, which is the largest observation minus the smallest observation. So for this case, the largest observation is 40 and the smallest observation is 14. So 40 minus 14 we will have 26. And therefore, 26 is the answer. Question 4. The first four diagrams in a sequence are shown below. So here are the first four diagrams. As you can see from here, diagram 1, we have 5 dots. Diagram, diagram 2, we have 8 dots. Diagram 3, we have 11 dots. And diagram 4, we have 14 dots. A. Find the number of dots in diagram 8. 1 mark. B. Find an expression in terms of n for, for the number of dots in diagram n. So 2 marks. C. Explain why it is not possible to have a diagram with 157 dots. 1 mark. Now, let's study the diagram here. So the first diagram we have 5 dots, which means we need to add 3 to get the next number of dots here. So in diagram 2, we have 8 because 5 plus 3, we have 8. So we follow the same sequence here. So 8 plus 3, we have 11 dots, which is the number of dots in diagram 3. So next, 11 dots plus 3, we get 14 dots. So this is the number of dots in diagram 4. So we will follow this pattern all the way to diagram 8. So in diagram 4, we have 14 dots. Hence, 14 plus so we have four more diagrams to go, so 8 minus 4, and then each diagram will incre increase by 3 dots, so hence times 3 here. 
Therefore, the answer is 26 here. So in diagram 8, we have 26 dots. Okay, so next to answer B, so this is an aromatic sequence because each diagram is added with a constant number 3 here. So the aromatic sequence formula is Tn equals A plus N minus 1 D, where A is a first term, the D is the common difference, the common difference here is 3. So you substitute the values 5 plus bracket n minus 1 times 3. Then we expand the bracket, we have 5 plus 3n minus 3. Simplify, we will have 3n plus 2. Hence, tn equals 3n plus 2 is our answer. Now for C, to see if 157 dots is possible to have a diagram or not, so we need to find what is the value of n first. So for this case, we'll just put it as 3n plus 2 equals 157. We solve this equation, 3n equals 155, then n is 155 divided by 3, which will get 51n two third. So from here, we can see that n is not a positive integer. Therefore, it is not possible to have a diagram with 157 dots. Question 5. A. A bag contains pink counters, blue counters, and yellow counters. A counter is picked at random from the bag. The probability that the counter is blue is 2 by 5. The probability that the counter is yellow is 2 by 15. Find the probability that the counter is pink. One mark. Alright, so here's the solution. To find the probability to get a pink counter, so we just need to take 1 minus the probability of blue counter minus the probability of the yellow counter because we, if we add all the probability together, it should give us 1. So for this case, it will be 1 minus 2 over 5 minus 2 over 15. Then we calculate and the answer is 7 by 15. Hence, the probability that the counter is pink is 7 by 15. B. Another bag contains 8 red counters and 16 green counters. More red counters are added to the bag. The probability of picking a green counter from this bag at random is now 1 over 4. Find the number of red counters added to the bag. 2 marks. So first we let x to be the number of red counters added to the bag. Because this is the value that we need to find. So the probability to get green counters will be the total desired outcomes over total possible, possible outcomes. So we know that the probability to get green counter is 1 over 4. The total desired outcome is 4. Uh, is 16 because we have 16 green counters. And the total possible outcomes means the total counters inside the bag. So it will be 8 plus 16 plus x. Then from here, we will solve this equation. 16 times 4 equals 24 plus x. So x is 16 times 4 minus 24, which is 40. Hence, the answer is 40. There are 40 red counters added to the bag. Question 6. The mass of a small pot is a kg. The mass of a large pot is b kg. AJ, buy 4 small pots and 2 large pots with a total mass of 119 kg. Banu buys 5 small pots and 3 large pots with a total mass of 165 kg. Form and solve 2 simultaneous equations to find the mass of a small pot and the mass of a large pot. So this is a 3 mark question. So over here, we have two unknowns that we need to find, which is the A and the B. As mentioned in the question, we need to form two equations so that we can perform the simultaneous equation and find the two unknowns. So to form the equation, we have to translate the sentence into mathematical equation. So to form the first equation, you look at this sentence, four small pots with A kilograms of the mass for each pot. So from here, I'll write it as 4a, which is the 
dotted mass for the small pots. And next, the keyword N is plus, followed by two large pots, with each of them B kilograms of mass. Hence, from here, I'll write 2B to get the total mass of the large pots. Next, from the sentence, total mass of 119 kilograms, so it will be equal to 119. I will label this as equation number one. Then I will form the second equation based on the second sentence here, five small pots. So from here, the total mass for small pots will be 5a. And the keyword n will be plus, then followed by three large pots. So the total mass for these large pots are 3b. Total mass of 165. So this is the total mass for both the small pots and the large pots. So equals to 165. I will label this as the second equation. Now I have formed the two equations. I want to form I want to perform simultaneous equations. So there are two methods we can do. The first method is elimination method. So from here, I'll start with the first equation. I multiply by three. So for this case, it becomes 12a plus 6b equals 357. I'll label this as equation number 3. Next, from the second equation, I multiply by 2 for both sides, and I will get 10a plus 6b equals 330. So I'll label this as equation number 4. So you might wonder why I want to do this step. So as you can see, after I form these two equations, we have the b with the same coefficient here so this is 6b this is also 6b because the next step what we want to do is I will take equation number 3 minus equation number 4 so that the b will be eliminated so now equation number 3 minus equation number 4 we will have 2a equals 27 hence a will be 13.5 next I will substitute a equals 13.5 into the first equation so that I will get the value of b so this is why I get 4 times 13.5 plus 2b equals 119 so I will solve this equation b equals 119 minus 4 times 13.5 divided by 2 I will get 32.5 so this is the first method elimination method next I also want to show you the second method method number two here which is started substitution method so I will start from equation number one I let b the subject because I want to substitute b here so b equals 119 minus 4a divided by 2 so simplify it I will get b equals 59.5 minus 2a then I label this as equation number 3 so I will substitute equation number 3 into equation number 1 uh, number 2 so that I will have 5a plus 3 times 59.5 minus 2a equals 165 so as you can see from here the b is eliminated so we can just solve this equation to get the value of a. So expand the bracket, we have 5a plus 178.5 minus 6a equals 165. So a will be 13.5. Then I substitute a equals 13.5 into equation number 3. So b equals 59.5 minus 2 times 13.5 and the value is 32.5. Now, as you can see from here, you can compare the answers for both methods, method 1, elimination method, and method 2, substitution method. You can see that both will give you the same answer. So, for this case, the small pot is 13.5 kilograms, and the large pot is 32.5 kilograms. Question 7. Given this diagram, the diagram shows a regular octagon, a square, an equilateral triangle, and a quadrilateral. A. Find angle BCD. 2 marks. So, to find angle BCD, which is this angle, we apply the formula of the interior angle of a polygon, which is 8 minus 2 times 180 degrees over 8. And the answer is 135 degrees. 
Hence, angle BCD is 135 degrees. Next B, explain why the quadrilateral BJ's D, BCDJ is a rhombus. Two marks. So from the diagram, we can see that AB equals BC equals CD, which is these three sides. The reason is because sides of regular octagon are equal in length. Next, we also can see that AB equals BJ because sides of a square are equal in length. Therefore, BJ equals CD. So next, we can also see that angle ABC equals angle BCD, which is 135 degrees. The reason is because these two angles are interior angles. And interior angle of regular polygon are equal. Next, I want to find angle CBJ, so which is this angle. We can see that we can take 135 degrees minus 90 degrees because of the square ABJL. Then we'll get a value is 45 degrees. From here, we can see that when we add these two angles together, angle BJC and angle CB CBJ, the sum is 180 degrees. So this proves that BJ is parallel with CD because interior angle of parallel lines. Since BJ equals CD and BJ is parallel with CD, therefore JD equals BC and JD is parallel with BC. So this proves that BCDJ is a rhombus. Next, C. Find angle KJD. One mark. So this is the angle KJD. From here, to find the angle KJD, it is equal to 360 degrees minus angle LJK minus angle L LJB minus angle BJD. Because it is the sum of a dot is 360 degrees. So we substitute the values. We have 260 degrees minus 60 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 135 degrees. And the value of angle KJD is 75 degrees. Hence, 75 degrees is the answer. Now, let us look at question 8. A box measures 84 cm by 60 cm by 36 cm. The box is completely filled with identical cubes. Find the minimum number of cubes required. Two marks. So let's sketch the box here. So this is how the box looks like with a height of 84 cm, 60 cm and 36 cm. So what we have to do is we need to find the HCF of 84, 60 and 36. So to do this, we will need to use the long division method to find the HCF of these three numbers. So let's divide first. Uh, prime numbers will be 2. So 84 divided by 2, we get 42. 60 divided by 2, we get 30. 36 divided by 2, we get 18. So we continue to divide all the prime factors until these three numbers cannot be divided together. So 42, we carry on to divide by 2. All these three numbers are even number. So we have 21, 15, and 9. And now, these three numbers are multiples of 3. So we can divide by 3. Then we get 7, 5, and 3. And as I can see from here, 7, 5, and 3, they are also prime numbers. So they cannot be divided together anymore. Hence, the HCF of 84, 60, and 36 will be 2 squared times 3. So all these prime factors. Hence, times is 12 cm. So which means that each side of the cubes, we can divide maximum is to 12 cm. So the minimum number of cubes required will be 84 divided by 12 times 60 divided by 12 times 36 divided by 12, which will get 7 times 5 times 3. Notice that these three factors are these numbers. Hence, we'll get 105 cubes. 
Therefore, the answer is 105 cubes. Question 9. Given this diagram, a boat leaves A and sails on a bearing of 040 degrees to a lighthouse 110 kilometers away. A. Mark and label on the drawing the position L of the lighthouse. Two marks. B. A second boat leaves B to meet the first boat at C. When they meet, the second boat has sailed the shortest possible distance. Find the bearing the second boat sails on. Two marks. So first, let's answer the A question. So from the question A, information given is the bearing is 040 degrees where the first boat leaves point A and the distance that it has traveled is 110 kilometers right so look at uh, the scale here is 1 cm to 10 kilometers so what we have to do is first we take out the protector draw a straight line which is 40 degrees from the north pole of point a okay because the bearing is 040 degrees okay remember bearing measures from the north pole then the clockwise direction so this is 40 degrees now the second question is how long is this line so the total distance traveled by the boat is 110 kilometers so the scale is 1 cm to 10 kilometers in other words this line must be 11 cm so we need to take out the compass and then we measure the distance between the pin and the pencil here right should be 11 cm then the pin point at point a then we draw a curve here so this means that this distance is 11 cm on the scale so which means actual distance is 110 kilometers and this point will be the point l so this is the answer for a now let's move on for b the second boat so leave point b and when they meet with when it meets with the first boat it travels the shortest possible distance so when i say shortest possible distance it means it is the perpendicular distance all right so now we need to draw a perpendicular distance what we can do is we take out a set square then align this side with the first line just now al then move this set square until it hits point b here then we draw the line here so this line will be the perpendicular line to the line al here and also which means that this line is the shortest possible distance traveled by the second boat okay now the next thing we want to answer the question what is the bearing that the second boat has sailed on so the bearing will be this one so start from north pole at point b clockwise direction until it hits this line where it travels in the shortest distance so we need to know what is this angle so first what we have to do is we have to extend the line here okay and this is the angle that we need to measure using the protector so from here the protector tells us that this angle is 130 degrees and this straight line means that this is 180 degrees hence the bearing for the second boat sails on is 130 degrees plus 180 degrees which is 310 degrees hence the answer is 310 degrees question 10 given this diagram the diagram shows four circles all with the same center the radius of the innermost circle is 5 cm and the radius of the outermost circle is 23 cm the shaded region is divided into three equal areas which is this one let's color these areas into different colors the yellow the orange and the green colors so these three regions have the same or equal areas by two dotted circles find the radius of the larger dotted circle three marks now let's label the radius of the larger dotted circle as r now 
the first thing we need to do is we need to find the area of the shaded region. So from the diagram, which are the colored region. So to get the area of this shaded region, it will be pi times 23 square minus pi times 5 square. So the 23 is the radius of the, out, the outermost radius and the 5 will be the radius of the innermost radius. So we'll get 504 pi. And now we need to find the area of one ring. So since all the rings have equal area, so each ring will be 504 pi divided by 3, which is 168 pi cm square area. So let's label this orange ring as A1 and the yellow ring as A2. So the area of these two regions, A1 plus A2, we can calculate it as pi r square minus pi times pi square. And we know that these two areas have the same area, so which is 2 times 168 pi equals pi r square minus 25 pi. Then from here, we can cancel out the pi. 2 times 168 equals 336, then equals r square minus 25. So r square equals 361. So square root 361, we get 19. Hence, the radius is 19 centimeters. Question 11. A. Factorize completely 30 minus 45A. One mark. B. Expand and simplify 5x minus 4y squared. Two marks. Now let's answer A question. Before I want to answer the A question, let's recap that in factorization, the expression AB minus AC, we have the common factor of A for these two terms. So we can factorize the A, it becomes A bracket B minus C. So we can apply this factorization into this question. So 30 minus 45A can be written as 15 times 2 minus 15 times 3A. So from here, we can see that 15 is the common factor. So we can factorize it becomes 15 bracket 2 minus 3A. Hence, 15 bracket 2 minus 3A is the answer. So for B, let's recap in expansion. A minus B square equals A square minus 2AB plus B square. So we use this uh, expansion formula to answer this question 5x minus 4y square. So our a is 5x, our b is 4y. So it becomes bracket 5x square minus 2 times 5x times 4y plus bracket 4y square. Then expand the brackets, we have 25x square minus 40xy plus 16y square. Hence, this will be the answer. Question 12. A television screen has sides in the ratio width to height equals 4 to 3. A laptop screen has sides in the ratio width to height equals 8 to 5. An image exactly fills the television screen. The same image only fills the height of the laptop screen and not the width as shown in the diagram. So here is the diagram. Find the fraction of the laptop screen not covered by the image. Give your answer in its lowest term. 3 marks. So from this question, we can see that the image feels exactly for the television screen. So in other words, the ratio of the width to the height for this television screen is also the size of the image. On the other hand, for the laptop screen, we can see that the height is filled fully, but not the width. In other words, this ratio here uh, for the width and to the height with the television and laptop, so the height is the same quantity here. So what we have to do is we find the LCM of 3 to 5 because the height in these two ratios we are referring to the same quantity. So the LCM for 3 and 5 is 
15. So now let's look at the ratio of the television screen given is 4 to 3. We can convert it into 20 to 15. So both numbers times be 5. 4 times 5 is 20, 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, so we want to standardize the ratio so that the height is 15. Next, we also label on the diagram. So this is 20, this is 15. So these two gaps are not filled up. So we want to find the ratio of the laptop screen. Okay, so it's 8 to 5. Again, this 5 is the ratio that is the same quantity with the television. So can be also written as 24 to 15. So 5 times 3, you get 15. 8 times 3, we get 24. So this is the ratio of the laptop screen. And we can label this as 24 to 15. Okay, so the size of the image is 20 times 15, which is 300. The size of laptop screen is 24 times 15, which is 360. So now we want to find the fractions where the area is not covered compared to the total area of the laptop screen. It is equal to 360 minus 300 over 360. So this 360 minus 300 will be this region. Okay, and we find that it is 1 over 6. Hence, the answer is 1 over 6. Question 13. Each day, Benas leaves home at the same time and cycles the same route to work. On Monday, her average speed is 18 km per hour and she arrives 4 minutes late. On Tuesday, her average speed is 24 km per hour and she arrives 6 minutes early. A. The time taken to travel to work on Monday is represented by T minutes. Write an expression in terms of T for the time in minutes taken to travel to work on Tuesday. One mark. Alright, so to answer this question, let's draw the timeline to understand it clearly. So we start with the time zero. On Monday, we need to label the time as T. So on Monday, she is 4 minutes late. So we to backtrack 4 minutes and this is the expected time. We can label it as T minus 4. So on Tuesday, she is 6 minutes earlier. Hence, we will back, go back the time 6 minutes and the question is what is the time for Tuesday? So traveling time on Tuesday will be t minus 4, which is the expected time, minus 6 minutes, which is t minus 10. Hence, t minus 10 is the answer. B. Form an equation in t to find the time taken to travel to work on Monday. 3 marks. We know that speed equals distance over time. Hence, Distance equals speed times time. Since the distance is the same from Bernard's home to work, hence S1 T1 will be equals to S2 T2. So we'll label the S1 T1 as the speed on Monday and S2 T2 for the speed and time for Tuesday. So it becomes 18 T over 60 equals 24 times t minus 10 over 60. So over here we need to divide by 60 because we need to convert the time to minutes because the speed is in kilometers per hour. But anyway, as you can see from here, the 60 are cancelled for both sides. So it becomes 18t equals 24t minus 240t. Then we solve this equation, 60 equals 240 hence t equals 40. The answer is 40 minutes. Question 14. Niluka thinks of an integer. He multiplies it by 6 and subtracts 20. He multiplies the answer by 2 and subtracts 30. 
his final answer is greater than 1000. A. Use x to represent Niluka's integer. Write down an inequality in x. 2 marks. B. Solve your inequality to find the smallest possible value of x. 2 marks. So the answer for A is 2 bracket 6x minus 20 minus 30 greater than 1000. How to form this inequality? Let's look at the description in the question. So first, think of an integer. Multiply the 6 will be 6x. Subtract 20, there is minus 20. He then multiplies the answer by 2. So the whole thing multiplied by 2. And subtracts 30, so minus 30. So this is greater than 1000, hence the greater than 1000. That's how the we can obtain the answer. Next, solve this inequality. So we can expand the bracket here. We will have 12x minus 40 minus 30 greater than 1000. Then we simplify further. We will have 12x greater than 1070 because minus 40 minus 30 we get minus 70 bring to the right hand side becomes plus hence it is 1070 so x will be greater than 1070 divided by 12 which is 89 and 1 6 so since x is an integer therefore the smallest possible value of x will be 90 so 90 is the answer Question 15. Given this diagram. In the diagram, A, B and D e are equal in length and parallel. So let's label the diagram based on this information. So A, B and D e are equal in length and parallel. Next, let's look at the next sentence. A, C, E and B, C, D are straight lines. Show that B, D bisects A, E. Give a reason for each statement you make. 4 marks. So from here, we can say that angle ABD equals angle CDE. So this is angle ABD and this is angle CDE. Because of alternate angles where AB is parallel with D. Similarly, we also can say that angle BAC equals angle CD. So this is angle BAC and this is angle CD. Because... It is alternate angle where AB is parallel with D. Next, AB equals CE because it is given by the question. Therefore, by ASA, triangle ABC and triangle EDC are similar. So hence, AC equals CE. So this length is equal to this length. Therefore, BD bisects AE, shown. Question 16. Factorize 4x squared plus 4x minus 15. 2 marks. To factorize this expression, I will use double bracket method. So first, I will write 2 brackets here. Then, I will write 2x here and 2x here because 2x times 2x will get 4x squared. Next, I will also write 3 and 5 here because 3 times 5 equals 15. I will also write minus in the first bracket and plus in the second bracket because 2x times 5, I will get 10x. Minus 3 times 2, I will get minus 6x. So 10x minus 6x will get 4x. Hence, this will be the answer. 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 5. Question 17. Given this diagram, P, Q, and R are three points on a circle center O. Angle QPR equals 35 degrees and angle ORP equals 30 degrees. OQ and PR cross at the point X. Find angle OQP. Give reasons for each step 
of your working for max so now let's label this angle which is the angle that we need to find angle OQP so we'll look at angle QOR so this is angle QR so it is equals to two times of angle QPR so this is the angle QPR which is 35 degrees the reason why angle QOR is two times of angle QPR is angle at center equals two times of angle at circumference so the value will be 2 times 35 degrees which is 70 degrees now let's label this angle as 70 degrees next we can say that OQ equals OR because both of them are the radius of the circle hence the triangle QOR is isosceles triangle then angle OQR equals angle ORQ because they are base angles of isosceles triangle then we can calculate their values which is 180 degrees minus 70 degrees divided by 2 which is 55 degrees now let's label this angle as 55 degrees next we need to find angle PRQ so which is angle ORQ minus angle PRQ then the value will be 55 degrees minus 30 30 degrees which is 25 degrees so let's label it as 25 degrees next I want to look at this triangle PQR so we can add 35 degrees with 25 degrees plus 55 degrees and plus with angle OQP which is equals 180 degrees this is because angle sum of triangle PQR then angle OQP equals 180 degrees minus 115 degrees which is 65 degrees hence the answer for angle OQP equals 65 degrees question 18 Chen and Xin are each tiling a bathroom Chen needs 5 packets of floor tiles 10 packets of wall tiles 4 bags of adhesive and two bags of growth sin needs x packs of floor tiles x plus two packs of wall tiles two bags of adhesive and one bag of growth this information can be represented by the matrix p equals so this is the matrix 5 10 4 2 x x plus 2 2 and 1 in a store a pack of floor tiles costs 140 dollars a pack of wall tiles $105, a bag of adhesive $13, and a bag of grout $9. From an online supplier, a pack of floor tiles costs $150, a pack of wall tiles $100, a bag of adhesive $12, and a bag of grout $8. This information can be represented by matrix Q. So this is the matrix Q, 140, 150, 105. 113, 12, and 9, 8. A. Find, in terms of X, the matrix T equals P times Q. 2 marks. So, this is how we multiply two matrix together. T equals PQ. So, write down the matrix P and matrix Q. Then, this will be the answer. So, to multiply, so first we look at this first row and this first column. So 5 times 140, we get this one. 10 times 115, uh, 105, we get this one. 4 times 13, we have this. 2 times 9, we get this. And add all together. So repeat the same process for this row and the second column. We will get this one. Next, second row with the first column, we will get this one. Second column, second row with the second column, then we get this one. Alright, so once we calculate the numbers correctly then we simplify this matrix this is what we get and eventually this is our final answer 1820 1814 then 245x plus 245 and 250x plus 232 so this will be our answer for A B 
Explain what the elements of the first row of matrix T represent. One mark. So let's rewrite the matrix T here. And this is the first row of the matrix T. Okay, so the answer for this question is the elements of the first row of matrix T represents the total cost of Cheng if he buys from the store and the online supplier respectively. So remember that just now we multiply the P with the Q. So this first row will be the information of Cheng, how many packets of floors, tiles, wall tiles and so on, right? He buy. And this is the prices for different supplier. So one is from the a store, another one is from the online supplier. So once we multiply this with these two information, these two will be the cost for different suppliers uh, respectively. C. The online price for scenes order is $2 more than the price in the store. Find X. Two marks. Okay, so let's look at the matrix T again. And we will need to look at the second row because second row will be the information for scene. Okay, so these are also the different causes uh, that different suppliers charge for scene. And as you can see from here, the online price is $2 more than the price in the store. So this is online price. This is the price in the store. So we can write the equation here. This price minus this price. So 250x plus 232 minus bracket 245x plus 245 equals 2. Then expand the bracket, solve this equation, we get 5x equals 2 plus 13, which is 15, hence x is 3. So the answer is 3 here. D. Sin orders all her items from the store or she orders all her items from the online supplier. Find the lowest price she could pay for all her items. One mark. So from the previous question, part C, we know that x equals 3. So what we have to do is we have to calculate the prices for each uh, supplier, whether it's from the shop or from the online supplier. So when x goes to 3, so let's calculate the price from the store. So it's 245 times 3 plus 245. So substitute x equals to 3 here. We'll get 980. On the other hand, the price from the online supplier, which is this whole thing, we substitute x goes to 3 here. We have 250 times 3 plus 232. We'll get 982. Now, we compare these two prices. Which one is the lowest price? So obviously, this will be the lowest price, which is 980. Hence, the answer is $980. Question 19. Given that 5 sine x equals 2, find the two possible values of angle x where the range of x is from 0 to 180 degrees. 2 marks. So let's write down the equation 5 sine x equals 2 and solve this equation. So sine x equals 2 over 5. So we inverse of sine for this angle, which is x equals sine inverse 2 over 5, we'll get 23.6 degrees. So since the range of x is from 0 to 180 degrees, this 23.6 degrees is an acute angle, we have to consider the obtuse angle as well, which is 180 degrees minus 23.6 degrees. Remember that when sine and obtuse angle, we'll get positive value as well. Hence, the answer is 23.6 degrees and 156.4 degrees. So fill out the answer, 23.6 degrees or 156.4 degrees. Question 20. Given this equation, rearrange the formula to make C the subject. So this is a subject of formula question, 3 marks. So let's rewrite this equation, 3a plus 2c equals 
5 minus C over 3B. So the first thing we have to do is we want to move the 3B here to the 11 side, which becomes multiply. So 3B times 3A plus 2C equals 5 minus C. Then what we do is we'll expand the bracket. We'll have 9AB. So 3B times 3A, we get 9AB. Then plus 3B times 2C, we get 6BC equals 5, 5 minus C. Then from here, we want to move all the terms consisting of C to the 11 side and the terms without C to the right side. So from here, I can see that this term consists of C and this term also consists of C. But this term and this term, they don't consist of C. So I'll move this to the right hand side minus C to the left hand side. So it becomes 6BC plus C equals 5 minus 9AB. Alright, so now from here, we have two terms with a common factor of C. So we can factorize C, which becomes C bracket 6B plus 1 equals 5 minus 9AB. Then I can move this whole bracket here to the right hand side which becomes division so c equals 5 minus 9 ab over 6b plus 1 so i have made the c the subject in this equation hence this will be my answer 5 minus 9 ab over 6b plus 1 question 21 write as a single fraction in its simplest form 3 over 2x minus 3 minus 2 over 3x minus 2. 3 marks. So now let's write again this expression 3 over 2x minus 3 minus 2 over 3x minus 2. We need to simplify this expression. So this is two fractions with an operation minus. Before we want to do any operation minus, we need to make them to have common denominator. So we will have to multiply the denominator together so 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 2 then from the numerator the first numerator has to multiply with 3x minus 2 and the second numerator has to multiply with 2x minus 3 so this is what we get 3 bracket 3x minus 2 minus 2 bracket 2x minus 3 over 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 2 the next step we do is we have to simplify this expression so first we expand the bracket here, 3 times 3x we get 9x, 3 times minus 2 we get minus 6, negative 2 times 2x we get minus 4x, negative 2 times negative 3 we get plus 6. Then this the denominator we just copy down, 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 2. So then we simplify the numerator, we will have 5x over 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 2. So this will be my answer for question 21. Question 22. Given this diagram, the diagram shows a trapezium ABCD. Angle ABD equals angle BDC, which is 90 degrees. AD equals 12.8 cm, BC equals 10.3 cm, and angle ADB equals 38 degrees. So all this information already labeled on the diagram. Calculate angle CBD. So this is angle CBD that we need to find. So 3 marks. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we need to look at triangle ABD. So sine 38 degrees equals BD over 12.8. Then we can find the length of BD here, which is 12.8 times sine 38 degrees. The answer is 7.88. So once we know the length of BD, next we look at this triangle, triangle BCD. So from triangle BCD, cosine angle CBD, which is the angle that we need to find, is equals to BD over 10.3. So BD is 7.88, then angle of CBD equals inverse of cosine 7.88 over 10.3, which is 40.8. 1 degrees to 1 decimal place. So the answer is 40.1 degrees. Remember, angle, you must leave the answer in 1 decimal place. Question 
Question 23. Given that 25 to the power of 2x equals 125 to the power of 7, find x. 2 marks. So from this equation, 25 to the power of 2x equals 125 to the power of 7. So we know that 25 and 125, they are a multiple of 5, or more precisely, 25 is the perfect square for 5. 1 to 5 is the perfect cube for 5. So 25 is 5 square, 1 to 5 is 5 cube. Then to the power of 2x at the left side, to the power of 7 at the right side. After that, we, we remove the bracket, then by multiplying the power together. So 2 times 2x, we get 4x. 3 times 7, we get 21. Okay, so from here, we can see that both sides have the same body, 5 here. So we can compare the power, which is 4x equals to 21. Then we solve this equation, x equals 31 over 4. Then my answer will be 31 over 4. Question 24. The table shows the monthly salaries of a group of 30 employees. So here is the table. A. Calculate and estimate for 1. The mean monthly salary of the employees. 1 mark. 2. The standard deviation of the monthly salaries. 1 mark. So the formula for mean is summation of fx over summation of f. So from here, since the x is given in range, for our case is m, the monthly salary will be the x. So it's in a range. So to calculate using this formula, calculate the mean using this formula, this mean has to be the middle value of the ranges here. So which is 3, the frequency here, 3 times if the middle number between 2400 to 2500 will be 2450. Similarly, 2500 to 2600, the middle number is 2550. Okay, we repeat the same process for the third data here and the fourth data here. So 2650, 2750. So frequency for the third data is 14. Frequency for the fourth data is 8. Then divide by 30 because we know that we have 30 employees here. Then calculate everything. We will get the mean will be 2,640. So $2,640 is the answer. Okay, so as you can see, this is just an estimate value because we don't know the exact value for the x. We just take the middle number of the range of the x given. Alright, so similar for standard deviation, standard deviation formula is square of summation of fx square over summation of f minus this whole thing is actually the mean. So the mean square here, we already know the value, 2640. So again, the x here, we have to substitute with the middle number of the range here. So which we get 3 times 2450 square plus 5 times 2550 square plus 14 times 2650 square plus 8 times 2750 square, then divide by the total frequency is 30, then minus the mean square, mean is 2640, then square it. Right, calculate everything, we get the standard deviation for this case is $19.74. So remember, money will leave it in the nearest cent. So $19.74 will be the final answer. Question B. Each of the employees is to be given a salary increase of $60 per month. Explain how the mean and standard deviation will change after the salary increase. One mark. Alright, so since uh, each employee, the salary increase by $60 per month, so the mean will increase by $60 as well. And there's no change for the standard deviation because we don't have any uh, change in the deviation of the actual value with the mean. Now last question, question 25. Some bacteria were introduced in a culture. The number n of bacteria t hours after being introduced is given by n equals m times 2 to the power of 3 t where m and m is the number of bacteria introduced. A. After one hour, the number of bacteria has increased to 2,000. Find M. So one mark. B. Find in terms of K, the number of bacteria when 8 
to the property equals k. One mark. C. Find the increase in the number of bacteria after two hours as a percentage of the number of bacteria originally introduced. Two marks. D. Which of these diagrams represents the graph of n against t? So, one more question. Now, let's answer for question A. The e equation given is n equals m times 2 to the power 3t. So, from the information given, the t is 1 hour and the n is 2000. So, we rearrange the equation becomes m equals n over 2 to the power 3t. They will substitute the values given 2000 over 2 to the power of 3 times 1, which will get 250. Hence, 250 is the answer. So for B, N equals 250 times 2 to the power 3T. So 2 to the power 3 is 8. So we can write this equation to be N equals 250 times 8 to the power of T. So since 8 to the power T equals to K, the equation becomes N equals 250K. So the answer will be 250K. Next for C, again we start with the formula given n equals 250 times 2 to the power 3t. So after 2 hours, the n becomes 250 times 2 to the power 3 times 2, which is 16,000. So the percentage increase will be the new value minus the old value divided by the old value times 100%. So for this case, it's 16,000 minus 250 divided by 250 times 100 percent, we will get 6,300 uh, percent. Hence, 6,300 percent is the answer. Now for D, diagram 3 is the answer because firstly, this is an exponential graph. Hence, it has to be bending outwards here. And it is not diagram 2 because when t equals to 0, we have a certain value. So that's why the certain the value is uh, 250. So that's why it doesn't start from 0. It will start with 250. Hence, diagram 3 will be the answer. All right, that's the end of the paper. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write it down in the comment. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. Until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead and all the best.